Good morning, good morning, good morning, good Monday morning. How are you? Welcome to the Shit List Roundup. It's it's a holiday today. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And the only words that Republicans can remember today is, I have a dream. Let's start the countdown. back to the shit list roundup thanks for joining me i am the tony michaels we're gonna surf the twin trendy trends of the tweety tweets today obviously it's martin luther king jr day and so there's a lot on the docket today about mlk day um there's a lot of really fucking bad takes i'm sure out there on the tweety tweets and the trendy trends and they're gonna keep on rolling in today um i know certainly there's some out there uh, but we're gonna look at some of the good stuff and we are going to look at mlk day I think it's still trending number one. It probably will be all day. We're also we're also going to look at Miss Betty White, the the queen of Hollywood comedy. Um, today is w- would have been her hundredth birthday, so I definitely want to make in that thread, make it into that thread. Also, uh, I didn't know this, but Muhammad Ali and Betty White shared a birthday, um, so Muhammad Ali is also trending, which is um, <laughs> very appropriate for Muhammad Ali, Betty White. And Martin Luther King, all to be trending, all on the same day in the trendy trends and the Tweety Tweets. So we have all those things going today. Um, also, also, I want to take care of some business. I want to thank all of you out there who follow me. I, I broke 20,000 on Twitter. I don't know how exactly significant that is. Um, but it, I, I want to thank all of you out there that not only put me over the top, but have been following me for a long time, listening to the show, supporting the show. With likes, tweets, retweets, putting up with all my bullshit. Because you definitely you definitely have had to put up with a lot of bullshit in the last year. It's been a year. It's been a fucking year. Holy shit. Last week was a year for the podcast. And you guys know we do the shit list roundup every single day, weekday. Now, noon Eastern, 11 Central for one hour. And we do the podcast Wednesday, 3 o'clock Central, 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, but things are going to be changing. We also do Bonehead of the Week on the weekends with me and Gabe Sanchez. And I think Gabe's going to join us today for the MLK Day conversation. Um, he's going to he's going to join us. But uh, and we do that show on the weekends. But we're going to be changing soon. And I, I believe we're going to start next week. We're going to go to, at this time, every single day, we're going to do the shit list roundup as part of the podcast. So the podcast is going to be every single weekday, two hours. It's a lot. It's a lot of content. That's a lot of me. You're fucked. You're completely fucked. So it's a good thing there's 20,000 people following me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, fuck. You You people are glutton for punishment. We got some comments rolling in. MJ says, yay, we are fuck. We fucking love you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, MJ. MJ has uh, always been a big fan, a big supporter. We love MJ here um expect because she's always throwing up the comments thank you mj for the comments and if you like the comment you can always go to the twitch app but here's the good news about going to two hours every single day we're going to be streaming now the shit list roundup live on youtube every single day so you will not only be able to comment on the shit list roundup on twitch but also on youtube if you prefer the tubes of you and chatting over there so we'll be doing that so make sure Make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube channel because we will be doing the two-hour show there every single day. It's going to make it less confusing, I think. Like, it's, it's less confusing. Now, the confusing part is, for me, I haven't figured out yet, like, where the... Because sh- the shit list roundup is going to be in the very first part of the ep- uh, the episode every single day, right? In the very first one, the very first part, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the announcements where we talk about shit like this, and then we'll get into the trendy trends and the Tweety Tweets. And then we'll do some other stuff in the second half, the second hour. And maybe, maybe if we have enough time and we need more time, maybe we'll go to three hours. I don't know. We'll just have to see. 
But every single day, two hours a day, here's the other difference with doing the podcast, quote unquote, every single day, as opposed to just on Wednesdays, is is the show every single day will now be broadcast and published on all the podcast directories. So Spotify, Apple, Google. So you'll be able to download the daily show on there, which is different than it is now. So that will change. And you notice we did, we tried, well, we tried. I'm not going to blame it on anyone. Gabe, <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening, uh, he'll, he'll be joining us here in a minute. But if you're listening, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties on our first, on our first go around the bonehead of the week last week on Friday. But I think we got those sorted out. I think, I think because we tested it live, and that's the thing is it's live radio. I, I just call it radio because it's, I'm talking into a microphone. It's on video, but it might as well be radio. But when you go live, that's the things that happen. It can happen that way. So maybe we'll maybe we'll give Gabe a tough time time when he comes on the air today about how the bonehead of the week, the technical difficulties. That way he's on the ball on Friday this week. Because Friday this week we'll be doing bonehead of the week. And we haven't picked out our boneheads because what we figured was is that MLK Day, there's gonna be several bad takes that are gonna smoke out the boneheads of the week. <laughs> We figured out there's going to be at least a fucking half a dozen of these dumb motherfuckers that are going to give super, super horrible takes on MLK Day. Real fucking boneheaded takes, and there's already one that I've seen that we will talk about today. But again, I I want to thank all of you out there, not just for listening, but for following. I can't believe we um, it's been a year, and I can't believe there's 20,000 people that would actually want to see the shit I fucking type into Twitter. Because uh, sometimes I can't even believe the shit I type into Twitter. Literally, what I do sometimes, I know, I know it doesn't, I, I know it doesn't show, <laughs> but I, I literally write a tweet and I push the fucking tweet button. I smash that motherfucker. I don't proofread. I don't wait to be like, oh, should I tweet this? No, but no, I just fucking smash that motherfucker. I got an idea. Type it in there and fucking hit the button. It shows, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know if it's obvious, but. That's how it works sometimes. All right, let's get to the trendy trends and the Tweety Tweets here. Let's let's make it to where you can see the screen. Um, we can go down the... the uh, Elgin has... Uh, his tweet today was fantastic. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Um, and then, obviously, he has the picture of Martin Luther King. Thank you, Elgin, for your for your tweet one of my favorites this morning uh one of my favorite quotes hey, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this later but you know you can really you can really smoke out a panderer um to mlk day when when the quote they they quote is i have a dream not that that's not a significant quote or a significant speech but when that's the only thing they know about martin luther king jr you know you know something's afoot it it do but it bit don't see um, Rachel had a good one. You guys, you guys don't know if the uh, if you don't know, Rachel was on our podcast last week. If I can get this Zoom to work correctly, there we go. Um, she was on our podcast last week. Uh, she's talking about strategic outrage and what we need to do to win uh, twenty twenty two, and it's super important, super super important, especially as they're going to debate uh, voting rights on the floor of the Senate. Um, it, it, Rachel here says Republicans, quote unquote, honor. MLK Jr. by destroying the legacy he died for. Hashtag voting rights for MLK. And that's the truth. I I mean, you know, they can say I have a dream and they can, you know, quote the shit and they can go out and pander and all bullshit and act like, you know, it's going to be every fucking one of them today. But in the end, not one Republican in the House voted for voting rights. Not fucking one of them. And not one of them in the Senate's going to vote for it either. <clears throat> that's what the struggle is. God damn, if there was if there was a dozen of them that were decent fucking human beings, that's right. If they just reached the measure of decent human fucking being, that's where we're at in this country. That's where we're at. We have a party of of folks that are pro democracy and want to get things done. Now, yeah, they don't agree on everything. They don't agree on the payment amount and what features and is it too socialist or is it not socialist enough? You know, they fight those battles inside their own party, but there's one party that doesn't have one fucking decent human being, not fucking one. 
And that's the way it's going to stay for a long goddamn time. And we need to make them eat that fucking shit sandwich. If we're going to, if we're going to win in 2022 and protect voting rights for all people and get to a place in this country where, where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel on equality and equity, fuck, fuck what the minority wants in this country. Fuck that, the minority ideology in this country. Fuck what they want. Fuck them. We need to start on, on the path again to really obtaining real, not bullshit, I'm talking real equality and equity in this country. And white people, including including people who look like me, especially people who look like me, need to be using their privilege to snuff it out. It's enough of this shit. And Rachel's spot on here. That they honor MLK, but they shit all over his fucking legacy. So, in my mind, they can go fuck right off. Like, all the way. All the way off. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, This is another fucking shit box that we're going to get a take from this Eric Schmidt guy. But we'll get there. We will get there. We'll get there. Um, Because the grossest thing about this MLK day this year, the grossest thing about it is these fucking anti-vaxxers thinking somehow they're they're Martin Luther King-esque. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Number one, no person on this planet would ever fucking hold themselves, hold themselves up to be Martin Luther King and say it out loud. Holy fuck. You really are a brazen asshole when you're like, oh, yeah, I'm Martin Luther King because I want a Whopper and I chose to not get vaccinated. So I I don't have to wear a mask inside of a private business. Look, you're making choices. You're making choices. You can change your behavior. Black people, people of color can't change the color of their skin. You dumb motherfuckers. Sorry, I'm so pissed off, but that's just how it goes. Let's go to the trendy trends and tweety tweets. Again, Martin Luther King, our MLK Day, the hashtag, but Martin Luther King Jr. is at the top of the trendy trends. Uh, But Betty White Challenge is trending at number two because Betty White is, today is her 100th birthday. And unfortunately, we lost Betty White um, here recently before her 100th birthday, which is uh, completely a national tragedy. Um, I wish Betty White could live to be 5,000 years old. <laughs> and she would be funny, like r- all the way up to 5,000, wouldn't she? Um, she's so, she was so fucking hilarious and her timing was impeccable. And um, she, was the, she was the queen of comedy. Um, the funniest fucking person in Hollywood as far as I'm concerned. And if you ever watched just one or maybe even a half, just like a quarter of an episode, a quarter of an episode of the Golden Girls, and you understood her timing um, and understood what it, what comedy is with timing, you would know that she was the fucking master. Absolute master. And the reason why Betty White was such a master at it is because she did it for so long. Betty White, like, I, I mean, you can't even imagine. She was one of the first fucking TV show hosts way, way back when TV, when TV shows when variety TV shows started, she was one of the first before they could even, th- before men even like, oh, this is a thing we want to take over, right? <laughs> before it was popular and it, it was something that gained power uh, because, you know, before that TV was kind of like looked at as, you know, this joke. It was the movies. It was the big screen that everyone wanted to be on. That was the thing. Not TV. Who the fuck wants to be on TV? Betty White did, and she did. And there's a great story. I don't know if you guys, um, there's a, a great documentary on Netflix and there's a great story about Betty White's show all the way back then where she had, and I'm trying to think of his name, but he was a dancer and uh, he was a black man and she had him on his show and she he sang and, and danced on his show and he performed on his show and uh, it, he was so fucking talented. And when they would play the show throughout the country, you know, it was syndicated. So when it went to all the networks in the South, there were several places in the South that they didn't want to play. Um, Betty White show because he, he was on there and he was black. They didn't want to play it because he was black, not because he sucked or, you know, it, you know, it, maybe he was outrageous or controversial. No, he was black. That was the controversy, the color of his skin. 
in the South. And they told Betty White that she had to take him off the show to be played there. And she said, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. You can go to fucking hell. Don't play it. I don't give a shit. If you don't want to see the shit, don't watch the shit. Fuck you. We're keeping him on. And that's what we're going to do. So all the way back then, Betty White understood uh, understood humanity, understand equality and equity. It, wasn't, it was a no-brainer to her. And um, she's going to be sorely missed. Her comedy... Uh, not only her comedy, but her heart in the country. And I, ho- I hope I hope, we can remember um, and honor Betty White every single day and her attitude, uh, not, just, not just to humanity, but also to comedy and to laughing. Um, she's going to be sorely missed. And uh, I, hope, I hope everyone, because I believe this Betty White challenge today is the challenge for people to donate because Betty White had not only had a, a soft spot in her heart for humans, but also animals. So go check out, go check out the thread of the Betty, the Betty White challenge and check it out. See what you can work out over there. And again, watch that. Um, again, I, I, I don't, I, I don't get paid to pimp the Netflix series. Um, Mayo's here. She's watching. She's absolutely amazing. She is Mayo. She is absolutely fucking amazing. Like Betty White, like she is the best of the best of the best of us. Um, you know, on, on a day like today or any other day, it's a good day to be like Betty White. So, and g- again, go check out that um, that documentary on her. The, the, the other, the other uh, great part of the documentary is where she's she's feeding this fucking grizzly bear. Like, I'm not shitting you. She's sitting next to this grizzly, like hugging him and kissing on him and feeding him a fucking grizzly bear. That's how serious Betty White was. She, she and she gave no fucks, not one. She was going to do what she wanted to do, and that was and that was to be funny. And and seek humanity. Um, um, this uh, this is uh, this is something trending. I'm not sure. I haven't, I didn't go into this thread earlier, but this is trending. Apparently, there's some pastor um, in Tulsa. His name is Mike Todd or Michael Todd. He's spitting on his hands and rubbing his spit on other people's face. This is really fucking ridiculous. They're drinking piss. They're eating dirt. What the fuck is going on with these people? And now they're spitting on each other. They're spitting on their hands and rubbing it on their faces in church. These people really have lost their fucking minds. They are off the rails. To prove what? That you people are fucking gross? What the fuck does this prove? To spit on your hands and rub it on someone else's face. This is really fucking dumb. But it's not surprising. You know, coming from... coming uh, Honestly, coming from American Christianity. It, 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 it just is, is... It gets more and more sickening. And people are wondering why the fuck... People are fucking running away from the church because of crazy ass shit like this. Uh, Mayo says, uh, "Wow, what a wonderful compliment! Thank you, Mayo. You you are welcome, Mayo. You are always one of our favorites here, Mayo." Uh, oh, here's the video. So, Jewish Jenner Resistor here has the the video of it. I guess um, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch the whole thing. I just I just want to watch. I want to watch these people do the whole. And fucking this is where spitting on each other. Most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn away. Is he saying, is he saying because he's going to spread his fucking disease and his spit on this person's face that that is Jesus? What the, what the fuck? What do do these, these people got sick, twisted fucking views of what Jesus was. Jesus wasn't running around doing money shots on people. What the fuck are you? people talking about good lord this is really this is fucking insanity oh you nasty fuck no don't no oh you net not i'm not eating nope can't do it nope i can't do it what, what i'm nope can't do it sorry folks i'm not gonna do it he rubs it on his fucking face is that what he does oh he fucking oh man fuck oh man you fucking sick motherfuckers God damn, to prove what? What are you trying to prove? What the fuck? Uh, Jewish gender resistor says Pastor Mike Todd spits and puts his sp- and puts his spit on a person's face in the middle of a pandemic to prove if you're evangelical, you don't have a fucking clue what it means to be Christian. <laughs> oh fuck. I swear if you lead a church, <laughs> you can do whatever you want in Jesus' name. It it really is. It really is some stupid fucking shit. Oh, my God. I can't even watch it. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to subject you 
on my show to watching some dude fucking hawk a loogie in his goddamn hand and give some other dude a money shot right on his face. What the fuck is wrong with you people? I saw a video the other day of a guy eating his own shit uh, to save to save himself from coronavirus. And I think that guy is joining us right now. Hey, Gabe, how are you? <laughs> uh, what a welcome. Thank you so yeah, much. Well, you now know, everyone I, knows I, what I, I, the what transition. I did. I got to get the transition right, you know? No, no, definitely. It was it was a seamless segue. I really <laughs> well, you know, you popped in, so I figured I'd bring you in right there on that situation. Can, yeah. Have you seen this video of these guys? No, spreading? I have not. I I have not. Don't, don't watch it. Don't okay, watch it. But got no, it. But no. What is the premise? What's going on here? Well, so the premise is, is they're in a church, and they're talking about how Jesus something, Jesus this, Jesus that, and mm -hmm. what Jesus would do. And he hawks a loogie. If you look here, he hawks yeah. a loogie in his, in his hand. And then he actually let's make this bigger so we can so we can really see it. I mean, just fucking hawks one up. Uh, and then he does another one here. Uh, get really getting it ready. Get oh, there it is. Right. Whoa. And then and then he he gives this guy you know a Christian Bukaki loogie style right on this person's face. Oh God. Look at it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember when you when you made that video? We were in chat, and you're like, "No, the piss thing." I'm like, "Man, you better go for the shit because yeah. it, like they're gonna do some crazy ass shit." Here we are. <laughs> they're hawking loogies. Maybe they other. saw my video and they're like, "Well, that's already nope. been done." So right, right. Get, now, we can't eat the shit. Now, we gotta yeah. go straight for that. Yeah, we gotta. Oh, that is. It's like part of me is like. Part of me thinks that's like worse than eating your own shit like the, somebody You're letting I, someone else hawk yeah a loogie you on know your face. I, I, yeah i don't know where your mouth has been before this moment <laughs> and then you hawk a couple loogies and then you just go Ugh. i don't i don't understand it I don't like understand like it, it would have been it would have been something if you did like the simba where like you just like <laughs> took it on the forehead you know right, right. They're, they're like like make him king or something but but the, right the, yeah the, the absolute bonkers part here is this is not like happening you know in the crazy part of uh, of QAnon, where they they think JFK is going to come back alive, and they uh, you know they believe all right, the right, right. and they're 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 protesting because of whoppers and and these anti vaxxers are doing crazy ass shit. They're they're doing this in the name of Jesus, which is it, it just it can't you can't even you can't even make this shit up. Like you yeah, can't I, make this shit up. It's uh, listen if Jesus uh, if it all. If... <laughs> Look, if it if it's the saliva, your own like loogie or whatever that will save the day, like why? And it's I, I just like don't understand like why would this always comes back to situations like why would God or Jesus let this thing happen and then say, you know what? Now I'm going to save the day. And it was all in the spit the whole time. It's the same shit as Greg Abbott, right? After the synagogue uh, hostage situation in mm -hmm. Texas, he sends out a tweet that goes, our prayers have been answered. And that type of rhetoric, I absolutely hate because it basically implies that all they these prayed other, and fixed it, right? All the other right. stuff was all, it, all the, was and it's like, it. yeah, all the other terrible things that have happened in the world, people lost life, war, you know, genocide, whatever. Uh, one was justified because was justified. One, God let it happen, and two, if you prayed hard enough, then you would be able to fix the situation, and that's what that tweet did. As opposed to, oh, you know what? It was the FBI that came in and handled the situation. Right, not praising local law enforcement right. or, or or the group from Quantico. Right. Um, speak, speaking of that, because <clears throat> let, let's get off this feed if we're going to talk about that. I don't, don't want to have the guy <laughs> while we're talking about the – because uh, the situation, the hostage situation um, near Dallas, Fort Worth area, I, mm -hmm. I believe it was uh, 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 Colleyville. Is, 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 yeah, Colleyville right, right, right. was the actual town that it was in, the suburb that it was in. Um, but – it seems like to me now, now you know, it, th there was a woman who's in prison that was involved. It seemed like that was the reason why they were taking hostages to try to free this person. Because here we go again with the religion and people trying to, you know, uh, uh, change what truth is. Right. Pakistan has stoked this this narrative about this woman for for uh, for over a decade about her mm -hmm. prison sentence. I think it's like eighty nine years or some shit, but. Now, apparently that's the reason why this guy goes. But 
I was like, why, why that one? Why right. that one? Well, it seems like because they were live streaming, they were trying to get this, this rabbi in, in New York, um, in another synagogue, uh, to be, that, who is, who is, you know, famous, you right. know, they, they're, they're very publicly known mm-hmm. to try to get a federal sentence or a federal prison to let her out, which is not a thing that's going to happen. Someone right. watched way too many fucking movies is yeah, one yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, you know, all I know is you got to send in 50 boxes of pizza at order a helicopter. Like, you know, there's a whole like, here's a bunch of distractions. Right. 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 Thing right. Want, you know? right. Well, but but the, the, the news was is that this I think it was about 60 members of an FBI team from Quantico uh, go, uh, flew almost immediately to mm-hmm. the Dallas Fort Worth area on the ground and negotiating with this person to keep the negotiations going to keep those people alive inside the building. Cause sometimes right. that's, that's a negotiation tack is just to distract them from killing people right. in the meantime. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, you got to talk them, you got to talk them off the ledge. Right. Right. Well, right. And, 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 and you got to talk them not away, uh, uh, but also not to push the, the hostages off the ledge. Right. And it seemed like there was one that got released. There was four hostages. One mm-hmm. got released and then they, um, they were able to make sure the other three were safe. But some people were tweeting out that even like blocks away from the actual uh, synagogue that they could feel the flashbangs, which is indication that they were fucking serious about the flashbangs. They did not screw around. They were. uh, So I would imagine even the hostages were very. um, Oh, yeah. Concussed by the by the flashbangs. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, there is that, you know, aspect of collateral damage, but right. Right. But I mean, they did save their lives. Um, They were able to subdue this person, uh, whoever, whoever they are. And of course, like you said, uh, Greg Abbott tweets out, you know, tots and pears, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like, Oh, God's going to fix it. Right. And all the while the FBI is coming in to actually, to actually do the work to fix it. And, and and they're demonizing and they're like, oh, thank you, FBI. And our prayers are answered. And all in the same breath, they're like, oh, the FBI tried to destroy our country and they're trying yeah, to take down exactly. Donald Trump. And it's like, right. you so you're telling me that the same FBI who right. were a, an inside job to overthrowing or storming the Capitol are the same FBI that then save these people in the synagogue, which, by the way, is the same under the same FBI director that trump had so like it doesn't right. make a lot of sense that he nominated like right. he fired the guy that yeah. was that obama had he right, fired McCabe, that guy right? Because, well well comey and mccabe right right, right yeah and, and the reason why is because they were investigating him for you know right, possible yeah. crimes that he committed but then you have uh, uh him hire or nominating and then you know and uh, it just doesn't make any sense uh, yeah it, i mean when you really like uh really just like take a 30 second break to think about it you're like the logic doesn't really add up yeah well you know it's like yesterday i tweeted and it was meant to be like more of a rhetorical question because i knew the answer and i tweeted out uh i said because yesterday this whole like save america and make america great again basically oh, yeah. rally that was in florence right. arizona no, you, not you mean, you mean the, the nazi the, rally that, that, right right not to be confused with florence italy the actual <laughs> florence, but florence uh, arizona but I had tweeted out, oh, I said, uh, I was like, uh, why would Trump need to make, you know, uh, or like if Trump already made America great, why would he need to make it great again and save America? Right now, I already know the answer. Right. right. I, I tweeted about this previously and had photos and videos and stuff. And it wasn't really meant to be like, a, I, don't, I don't know. This is like, I naively don't know because I do know the answer. But it was funny to see how many people had answered like genuinely. And I was like, oh, no, this is a. Re- I'm fine. Whatever. You guys can answer the question, I guess. <laughs> like some people were legitimately like, um, do you do you know his track record? Do you know who he is? And I was like, yes, I know who he is. I never mind. I'm not even gonna get into this. It's crazy. So let's let's go back to the trendy trends and tweet tweets. You know, the Mama Hamad Ali's birthday is the same, shares the birthday with Betty White. And also look here, James Earl Jones shared. Mm. When I saw him trending, I got real scared. <laughs> yeah, well, I've seen that too. But here, here, it, uh, it, I mean, we can go in here if you, if you're if you're willing to to look. Yeah. But but it, it is his birthday. It's not it's not anything bad. So James right. Earl, and Twitter has been better at doing this. Um, you know, the, it, and it, it was almost the Betty White effect because she would trend a lot, and people were like, "What the fuck, Twitter? You right. scared the shit." There's out the of you. whenever a moment like this happens when you see a celebrity or whoever trending, and you're like, "Oh god, oh god." There's like that moment, there's anticipation and moment of like anxiety. There's 
probably like nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, there's the person that will respond with the gif of, uh, of yeah, it's Denzel Washington. Uh, Denzel Washington. He's like, Whoo. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, thank God. Right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? I do uh, happy birthday, Michelle. What? The, uh, there's like a thousand birthdays here. It, it's Michelle Obama's birthday, wow. apparently too. Look at that. Great what people. The hell? Great. This people. is like this is like the day. This like birthday day. So January 17th is like a power I day. Guess so I guess so. Um, and and this year, this year it's MLK Day, right? Right. Yeah. So we'll which is the? Uh, well, I don't think I even sent it yet, but I had a tweet. I have a tweet that says uh, on this day. <laughs> Like every year on this day, the hypocritical GOP boots up their Millennium Edition, Windows Millennium Edition PC, sends out uh, <laughs> an MLK Jr. tweet, and then uh, just goes against every basic human right, right. tomorrow. Well, I mean, the, and the only thing they can remember, which, is, you know, obviously one of his most significant speeches and the most significant words that has come out of his mouth, one of the most memorable is, I have a dream. Right. And like, that's the thing that they, like, that's... That's the thing that they do. Like, there's so many other good quotes too, even yeah, yeah. from that speech. Oh, they'll 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 take sound bites and and then use that and be like, you know, praise MLK Jr. And then uh, within that same breath, you know, they might just completely go against the uh, the interest of those in which MLK Jr. was like fighting for. Right. Well, uh, Coretta Scott King is also trending because. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, she Bernice, King. Some, she Bernice King some. is trying to make sure that they remember her mom because that is significant because, uh, behind every really, uh, man there, there is a fucking very powerful, strong woman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, most, most people don't, most people don't know, right. but we should, we should, um, because I believe that the face of Michelle Obama and Coretta Scott King, uh, Stacey Abrams, um, is the future of American power. And that's, what's terrifying these people. You know, right. I think that's ultimately what at the heart of it is the reason why they're like, Oh yeah, Martin Luther King. That's great. Uh, voting rights. Fuck that. We're going to stomp that out you right. know, because they're terrified, um, mm -hmm. of the prospect that, that there's equality and equity in this yeah. country. I will say that she did share some nice photos, uh, of, of her dad the past couple of days. Did she? Oh, that's yeah. Good. Like him riding a bike, just like normal, like everyday stuff outside of the like, suit in a tie and i'm giving a right. speech you know like like just normal average right. day. i was setting. a normal i was a normal person fighting because he was a human normal being. people right, right. exactly yeah. i mean he 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 transcended you know this right this normal everyday guy thing yeah uh not just with his ideas but with his activism mm -hmm. um and, and you know his, his american patriotism for that matter i mean right. you know so many times we forget that everyone's like oh they're fighting you know and these these knuckleheads out there that think that they're going to lose something because someone gains equality and equity yeah. uh, that <laughs> that it really does get me it really does get me that they think that mlk martin luther king jr wasn't some average dude um right. but he was and he was fighting for those rights so also they in... think that also they think that uh on if martin luther king jr were alive today They'd be like, "Yeah, he's oh. our man," and he'd be like, mm, "No, oh, so you want to see you want to see a horrible fucking take? Is that what you want? I mean, we can go to like here's here's some of these pictures that you're yeah. Talking so there, about. yeah, there's a there's a bike photo. It's really nice. Yep, there's that one. Uh, we'll give credit here while we're while we're going. Um, uh, yeah, and I am sure there are a ton of dumb takes that people have. Oh yes, we there are plenty. Here's another great picture. Uh, I believe it's her and her dad. Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. so. Um, in the backyard just with the swing set, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the untrimmed bushes that everyone sometimes has in your yard because yeah. they got yard work to do, but they're too yeah. busy, you know, fighting for things like voting rights. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's even hard for people who are just trying to maintain themselves during a pandemic or just trying to do everyday things. And then he's over here fighting for equality and basic human rights for everyone you know, so it's like, yeah, you know, I'll, you know, give him a pass on the trimming of the bush over there. Well, I mean, you know, back to people in this country thinking that they're going to have something taken from them, which right. is the only the, the only uh, <laughs> obvious proof of privilege. Mm -hmm. But it's something taken from them by the equality of others. But the, black people in this country um, just want equality. They're 
they're just lucky they don't want revenge, right? And right. they don't. They don't. And they never have. And he's this, he's like the symbolism of that. Mm -hmm. That him and John Lewis, and that's the other thing I want to mention here on Martin Luther King Day, as they're going to start actually debating the voting rights bill in the Senate tomorrow, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, apparently that's the news that they're going to actually debate, uh, start to debate the voting rights. Act. Which is crazy that we even have to debate this. Like, this right. is so it, dumb. Right. Right. Well, I mean, the reason why we have to debate is because the Republicans, you know, worked really hard to get Supreme Court justices, right wing Supreme Court justices. And years ago, they fucking undid a lot of the Civil Rights Act yeah. to where uh, what is happening now in some of these states where they're trying to make sure that these legislators can overturn the will of the people mm -hmm. um, with without without the federal government being able to say, no, you that's a violation. Right. Um, yeah. Right. You know, or doing so much that you don't even know about what's being done, right? Like right. how many states? Because like I feel like every day I'm hearing a new number of uh, uh, of different laws that were passed on a local statewide level that you don't hear about, and then it hears you hear about it because somebody looked it up or found out this like really obscure loophole they created where it says you can't do X, Y, or Z when it comes to voting. And then you're like, what the fuck? And then you find out this thing has been like enacted and put in place three months ago, you know? Right. Um, but well, yeah, it's like every day there's more that, and here's, more. Here's uh, um, Senator Warnock. Mm. Um, today on MLK Day, I'm remembering Dr. King's words, the arc of moral universe is long, but it mm -hmm. bends towards justice. It's our job to keep bending the arc. And what a perfect point. Yeah. That that it doesn't do it by itself. I mean, I mean, Martin Luther King didn't, you know, do nothing. He did yeah. something um, and everyone can do something. But um, going back to this voting rights thing and what I think what um, Senator Warnock is, is talking about here, I'm going to retweet this, um, is back to the voting rights and the uh, the debate tomorrow in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually believe that we should go as far as make um, voting the a national holiday. Right. Uh, our election day, a national holiday. Yeah. And I actually think that we should call it John Lewis Day. Um, I believe that is very appropriate. Now, there's plenty of other activists out there that have done great work for voting rights right. and civil rights, uh, but none probably uh, more than John Lewis. Yeah. Um, I mean, we... let's be honest here, right? That's a big reason why uh, Republicans were fearful during the pandemic and tried to put up as many voting restrictions as they could was because the closest thing that we've ever gotten to a voting holiday was the pandemic and having an election right. during the pandemic, because it meant that people were at their home and they could do various acts. They could mail it in legally, a mail in ball ballot, or they could show up uh, to their local polling place and vote without having to worry about, Oh shit, do I go before or after work? And do I have time? And, and will I be able to stand in line? And because of COVID and restrictions, like there, you know, like for me, especially in, in Los Angeles, my polling place that's usually typically busy was, you know, especially having voting available early. And on top of that, the ability to go at any point during the time leading up to the election was great. And and you look at that and you see what Republicans are fearful of. And that's it right there, which is them losing the control that they had to say you can only vote on this day or around these days and the days that you can vote also coincide with actual work days. And there's no actual day that says, Hey, take the day off, do what you need to do. Errands, what have you, your normal average day, normal life stuff. And you can also vote on that day, like at your leisure. But, but they doesn't don't want that, that speak to, doesn't that speak to, cause I constantly pound the drum here that these people, the reason why they hate democracy is because it's their enemy. Like, it's oh, what yeah. will destroy it will is what is going to destroy it's free, your part, fair right? or any sort of like equal opportunity against it. Because right. It means it puts them at a disadvantage because other people who might finally have a voice because of the people coming to represent them or support them, they're against it because they say, Oh no, 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 no. We can't have this person that might vote against us, might speak out against us, might be against our platform. So we need to limit the amount of people or the access that people have by restricting them with some obscure ass just. 
Well, you know, it's you know. Uh, we had we had Ra- Rachel Bitkoffer on last week, and she mm-hmm. talked about what Stacey Abrams did in Georgia, and, and the one thing that Stacey Abrams did in Georgia, like she didn't wave a magic wand. I mean, she worked her ass off, but what she actually did was take the the rules that Republicans have always used to make sure to suppress a certain right. type of vote and get out another certain type of vote with absentee ballots and mail-in ballots. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the other switch during the pandemic is before it was older white folk that used absentee ballots and mail-in ballots. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't utilized in certain communities out there. And Stacey Abrams really freaking went in and said, you know what, we're going to take these quote unquote conservative voting ideas Right. And we're, and we're going to use the absentee ballot. We're going to use mail in ballots and we're going to mm-hmm. get this vote out. We're going to get it out as much as we can. We're going to teach these people, which is always what Republicans have done is they have strategic outrage. They have an aim um, they, they make sure to organize and get get their the, their constituents. You're going to vote to vote. And that's how they've always convinced us that states like Georgia are red and they're not. Right. They're not red. Texas, I don't believe, is red. I don't believe a lot of southern states are red. I I think there are probably some red states. But ultimately, if the people who actually uh, could vote and and were able to vote or did vote or, you know, I mean, I guess you could say opt in, not opt out uh, or not opt in, but to opt out of voting. Mm -hmm. If if you if you did it that way in some states are moving in that direction where you don't you don't opt in to voting, you have to opt out of not voting. Right. Um, if they moved in that direction, they made um, they they made holidays out of election days. Mm-hmm. We would have a, a much bigger turnout. We'd have a much better democracy. And the reason why is because more people would have their voice heard. And right. that's what they're terrified of. It's because they know that we know that their ideas fucking suck. Because exactly. really, honestly, what ideas do they have? What at this point? What at this point is the Republican members of Congress doing or saying if they can't even vote in the House, not fucking one of them or one of them in the Senate for voting rights? I mean, literally, right. the reason why Democrats are so frustrated at this point at, at Cinema and Mansion isn't because Cinema and Mansion are the only fucking shitheads. Like there are there are 50 other shitheads that absolutely there's not even a conversation of them voting right. Like, Cinnamon Mansion, there's this negotiation back and forth, right? And there's this banter back and forth because they actually reside in the Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. But there are 50 other motherfuckers that aren't, won't even take your phone call. Like, won't he, like, oh, oh, your voting rights? Fuck your voting rights. We don't like your voting rights. And the reason why is because it would take us out of power, right? Right. Yeah. Anything that threatens their position or their, or their, uh, uh, you know, hierarchy of power or whatever you want to describe it as it is certainly something that they fear and something that it's like, we want to suppress, we want to pinch the hose where it is so that the flow of water doesn't come out. And that flow of water is like just basic rights and just like the voice to be heard by the general population of people, not just the white, the rich, the powerful, you know, or any of their constituents in which donate back to them to keep them in power. Right. And so if there's anyone normal person, you know, who wouldn't otherwise be able to, uh, to transcend this kind of restriction, you know, they're not going to support them. Right. They're not going to let them be heard. They're not going to let them have the possibility of overthrowing this structure of power in a democratic fashion. Well, and I think and I think that's one thing that we need to keep in the in the narrative going past him. OK, not in this day today, mm-hmm. uh, honoring Martin Luther King Jr., because I know I know the one thing he would probably be saying. And there's probably a quote out there of him saying it somewhere is like, it's not about me. It's about it's about the right to vote. And I be, I believe I believe that he wouldn't be um, with the anti masters, which we're going to see a few bad takes here. Um, acting like they're MLK, wearing MLK and self-proclaiming oh themselves as Martin Luther King. Uh, but he would be in Washington right now pressuring uh, to give everyone, not just people of color, uh, but everyone, Trump supporters, uh, Democrats, Republicans, fascists, mm-hmm. communists, socialists, the right to vote. Because everyone has, we need to get to the point to where the majority of ideology 
is actually instituted in government in this country and the, and the majority ideology can govern. Until then, we are going to have these battles. Uh, Amy here says, happy MLK Day. I'm going to try to follow back everyone who comments on this tweet today. Uh, let's get ready to mobilize for midterms and keep fighting uh, for voting rights for MLK. And I think I think that should be the message. Um, it's a beautiful yeah. message, Amy. Thank you for your tweet. It's um, definitely, you know, it, this is one of those things where it's like 2020, everyone's like, this is the important, like, this is the most important election. And it's like, yeah, it, it is the most important election because it determines if we're going to stay with this. this well, well, the clown, next, the next, the next, clown this fuck. one. But then 2022 is, is it, it, just as, if not more important, because now we actually have our, the, the voting rights are at stake right now, which means that because they didn't like how 2020 was going and how 2020 ended up going. And at the end result, as we see right now, they're arguing on some dumbass, uh, you know, fraud, you know, oh faking God. electorals. Well, you know, you know that at the speaking of the the Nazi rally in Arizona, I'm trying to find this bad take while we're talking here, mm -hmm. because there is one particular that that Patriot takes posted that these was these it the one about were... Olive Garden? No. Well, no. Well, I, oh. uh, it's that Ethan Schmidt fuck. Um, Patriot takes posted. It was actually in the thread. I'm glad it's way down in the thread now. But I do want to get to this gross fucking take because you know me. I want to rant and rave and yeah, fucking yeah. eat these people alive. Um, but um, so I want to. I want to find this. Where is it? And maybe it's buried. <clears throat> uh, maybe I just go to Patriot's page here because um, it was a horrible take. But but um, again, we need not be afraid to find out and see these gross son of a bitches because it is really gross how they call themselves MLK. Like, here it is. Here it is. Um, Patriot Takes posted uh, this Ethan Schmidt, this fuck. You seen this guy go into like, into like vaccine locations and harass people because they have mask on, they're getting a vaccine. Um, they've kicked him out. He's also, he also had a video at the rally talking about how he harasses cancer patients, which is just fucking gross. Um, uh, everyone needs to see what these people are saying. These people are fucking. These people are are not coupled with humanity, reality or humanity. But yeah. this guy here, <clears throat> he's recording himself at the Trump rally. That's where this is, is saying uh, he loves to harass cancer patients, says he actually uh, the actual cancer patients that harass him and Carrie Lake is on his side. Uh, Carrie Lake is someone who's running for something, I guess. She's Some running Trumper. for governor? He's at the Senate seat. Is it Wait, the Senate no. seat? Um, but he but he says Martin Luther King is on my side. Yeah, governor. That's what it was. Is it governor? Okay. Yeah. Which so is, let, uh, yeah. let's again, there's going to be a lot of bad takes. There's going to be a lot of bad takes. Um and this is uh, this is where this shit like this is where these politicians are being pushed from because you got to realize that a lot of times the politics, the noise, the reason why they're saying the shit they're saying is because their followers, the people that are voting for them, the people that are donating to them, the Facebook ivermectin groups, that's mm -hmm. what they're saying. So they have to parody it because I never believed Trump was saying this stuff, you know, like he would say it and then they believe it. He was just saying what they wanted him to say, like. Right. He was tuned in to, oh, they want me to say this garbage shit, so I'm going to say this garbage shit. And mm -hmm. that's what this is. Listen to this fucking idiot. Multiple news articles saying I love to harass cancer patients. Um, ABC 15 Arizona saying I love to harass cancer patients. Let me tell you where this conspiracy theory started. It all started one day. So him him perpetuating a conspiracy theory misinformation <laughs> and doing sensational social media out of it. Um, now, now that conspiracy, there's a conspiracy theory of the conspiracy theory. This is where these right. fucking people decouple. Well, this is the same reality. type of shit that Trump would say, right? Like this is fake and this is false and this is not true. And what I'm going to tell you is true. And you know, if I say it right. enough, it's the, it's the, it's the Hitler right. uh, propaganda right. technique, which is Gerbil, everyone else is wrong. They lie long enough and they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. And, and I prove that the wrong prove in quotes. Uh, and I am, I am right. I am the truth. I am the source that you should always come to. And it's the same type of stuff here, which is like, it's revisionist, right? They're, they're, they're retelling the story, uh, from a false narrative. And this is the same type of bullshit from, 
Well, and the story. reason why this guy is in the position that he's in, that he has to defend himself from these um, these reports that he's that he's harassing cancer patients because he is like cancer patients outside the pandemic. Out, yeah. Forget about coronavirus. They would wear fucking mask because they're susceptible to getting a disease or, or anything that would compromise their immune system because right. they're getting fucking treatments for cancer. Basically, what a lot of cancer treatments do. I'm not a fucking doctor. But I at least understand this much is cancer patients basically to kill the virus. They basically almost try to kill you or, or, or the cancer or whatever. They whatever. have to in, in, in their layman's you. terms. Yeah, you have to reset your immune system. So basically to prevent the the treatment from, you know, for, prevent your immune system from also like combat or like trying to fight the treatment. You have to bring yourself down to like almost a zero so that it can attack those things in your body that are attacking your body, you know, and you're weak and you're tired and you're exhausted. And when you're already, you know, either doing chemotherapy or radiation, like you are not strong, you are compromised. Your immune system is weak, if not like just depleted to zero so that you can actually target these things in your body to kill them. And it's just, it, but, but, but that's the thing is he goes in these clinics and he, you know, some of these people are cancer patients, but he can't tell. And the reason why he can't tell is because there are people there with the mask on because of the pandemic. There are people there with the mask on because they might be cancer patients. Right. But that's the thing that these people get in this rabbit hole of not only, not only that masks don't work for pandemic and don't work for COVID mask. Now bad mask enemy. Right. right? Like, like you're not you have gone so far down this rabbit hole that you are harassing cancer patients, you dumb motherfucker, because you can't tell the difference. And no one can tell the difference. People with mask on or not mask on, vaccinated, right. unvaccinated. You don't know why that person's wearing a fucking mask. You don't know why. What the fuck do you care in the first place? Right. Maybe there's a what is it doing? What is it right. doing to impact you? They were in my body, my choice, a, right? They're in a facility, in a clinic, getting treatment nowhere near you they're not in your home they're not in your car they're not in, 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 in they're not in the gym with you right they're it's a doing choice something they're making right on their own elsewhere outside of your perspective and you this fuck actively goes <laughs> out of his way to then confront these people like it's their problem Right. Well, and the other thing too is he's this is this is the gross fucking thing. Let's listen to what he's going to say because I know he's going to go back to the MLK. Let's listen to it and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. When I was uh, hunting mass Nazis. Mask Nazis. Come across this. Oh my god. Sonny's hair and wig. I walk in. And uh, the first thing to say to but me... First things first. First things first. Before we get to the MLK and all this stuff. Number one, Ethan, you, you need to shave your beard. It fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. Either that or you need to get some kind of treatment to thicken it up there or not do the lighting that you have because we can see... you. you we can't even hardly see your beard. Yeah. Uh, tiny um, tiny number, beard over here. Right, right. Number two... Number two, man, you need to learn how to fucking speak into a camera. You really are not competent. It is no wonder people see you as a fucking fragile white male because it shows through the way you speak into a fucking microphone in the camera. So fuck right. this guy. But let's continue. He's, Sir, do you have a mask? And I politely say, no. He does I don't not have politely a mask. say, by I have the way. Medical and religious exemption. <laughs> not a thing. And uh, the cancer. The religion patient, of what? Cancer of no mask? Store. I don't understand what the fuck Close that means. And, uh, they harass me for not wearing a mask. They harass me. I don't harass them. I don't. I no, don't no, and no, Actually, no. He doesn't get a phone out me. and get up in cancer front of them while they're me. getting a vaccine. And they weren't even cancer patients. It was the store employees. But, oh, uh, oh. So, <laughs> so he wasn't harassing cancer patients. He was harassing the store employees, right? <laughs> so he went into a wig store. Luther, which, by right, the way, I just hold on. Let's let's just let's just get something <laughs> right, out here. And right. okay, why was he in a wig store? Why did he need to go to a wig store? Was there something that he well, needed? Did he, he needs need a, a beard wig. Ob he needs a beard wig, right. obviously. I mean, but that may be the situation. Here. Again, he's in a place that he is do not. They sell, do they sell beard extensions at a wig store? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I mean like, you're, I mean, like also keep in mind, that, like, it's like, why would he need to go to the wig store? What does he need to, like, 
Well, because I, he knew he knew that they were right, forced no. him to wear a mask, right? Right, I mean, right. This right. is the same. This is the same shit where these people are choosing not to get vaccinated, and they they wonder why the Burger King is like, "Get the fuck out of here with that shit! We're not right. serving you." The fucking sign says so on the yeah. goddamn door, and you chose to do what you do. If you want a burger, order it. We'll bring it out to you curbside, you dumb right. fuck, or go through the drive-through. This is all dumb shit. King Junior is on my side. Get yeah, there, you, you go. Be proud of me exposing Sonny's hair and wig. And, Martin uh, Luther King Jr. After I posted that video, obviously went viral exposing a private left, company, but, uh, <laughs> right? Okay, again, again, this is this is the gross thing they do because what they're doing is they're trying to compare their their little fucking rabbit hole delusion about vaccines and mask yeah. mandates to compare it to sit-ins in the South, the diner sit-ins in the South, right. where 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 black people who cannot change the color of their skin. They cannot yeah. change it. They can't take it off. They can't not. I mean, if you're vaccinated or you're not vaccinated, the only way to, for anyone to know is for you to show proof or not yeah. proof, right? This the only. I mean, you can take your mask off. They can't take the color of their skin off. You dumb motherfuckers. Yeah. And it's it, and so that's the comparison, right? Yeah. Because, this is not. This is not discrimination. Okay. Right. Like these. These dumb fucks think that they're being <laughs> persecuted against because they're unable. Quick side note: There is the people that were in uh, in uh, in Times Square in New York at the Olive Garden, and they decided to have a sit-in for oh, two God. hours and berate the people who worked at this Olive Garden. Right? They're just employees, right? Just employee trying to make an hourly wage and get tips, and they sit there and they cause the ruckus. The Olive Garden had to shut down. They get arrested. And I was I was reading takes yesterday and people were like, oh, the cops just arresting people from sit eating. And they're like, no, you dumb fuck. What they were doing was they were causing a disturbance in a private right. business. And the people who make a living in that private business were unable to do so because they had to shut down early because these people were causing a problem for other people. Who were there to there, eat. Who were there to eat and there to work. Well, you know, and, and a lot of people would say, well, why are you giving this guy noise? And the reason why I'm giving this guy noise and the reason because some of these people at Olive Garden, it, this is all performance art in the first place. But yeah. this guy has gone viral with a lot of these videos and, and he has a following. And you can go watch other videos that Patriot Takes posted um, uh, at the rally where this guy's got, I mean, he's bringing people. He's got fucking toads with him. And they're running around with him. Um, there is a following for this guy. And this kind of nonsense where they're harassing people. That's where this shit is coming from. It's emboldening these, these people. Yeah. Um, and, and and using Rosa Parks and MLK. Um, you know, this it's kind gross, of gross dude. shit. Oh, it's yeah, it's so really fucking, fucking gross. gross. Um, so I'm going to thank Pedro Takes. Because, I, I mean, that was the point of me showing it on MLK Day in the first right. place. Now, and again, for- I just want to I just want to emphasize the fact that these people are, these idiots are going Outside of the way to go to private businesses, clinics, right. treatment areas, choices whatever, that they're making, they are making. They actively chose to go to this place and then berate and uh, 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 just totally yeah, shut um, it. Well, you know, here's the thing because I we talked I talked about this weeks ago when they first went into. I think it was uh, uh, what was the first one? Oh yeah, they couldn't get cheesecake. They did, I thought, right, right, they yeah. thought because it's called the Cheesecake Factory, that's the only place that cheesecake's made or something. Right. Shit. Yeah. Right. So oh, we can't get cheesecake if we can't get like yeah, fucking idiots. But anyways, I I made the point that they were trying to make this disturbance because they keep they say the same shit. You know, they had the and right. they come. It comes from social media. It comes from right wing, and it comes from Russia really because they're trying to make chaos. Uh, the same propaganda that this Ethan Schmidt, I, I don't think he's being paid to do this, but I think he, he gets a fucking, he gets off on it. But oh, here's yeah. the thing. They say, oh, it's not a law. The mandate's not a law. It's only a mandate. And it's like, yes, it, it's also not a law. There's nowhere in a law where you can go into a restaurant, barge into the kitchen, like, nope, I'm cooking my own food and you don't have a choice because I'm an American and it's my freedom and my liberty to yeah. cook my own food in your private kitchen. That wouldn't, they, they would come and arrest you they yeah. would come, but there's no law saying you can't, you know, do that, right? And not only, not only that, but it's also like one, cops will arrest you, but two, uh, I cannot predict what actions will be taken by another private citizen, right. exactly, to shut you down. Whether right. it's hit you, or, I mean, like, because this guy, like others, and I say this 
legally as a joke, uh, deserve <laughs> to get punched the fuck out. Well, you know, this Ethan Schmidt definitely has one of the I, – I, I would imagine – that he might end up on the bonehead of the week poll. I actually oh, think yeah. we should. I could. I I'll throw him in there. And you know what we should do because we pick the pictures. We should really be nice and definitely not pick one of the worst beard picks that he oh, has. Totally. Because um, I he definitely obviously shouldn't Photoshop it at all either. He obviously, <laughs> he obviously, he obviously has a problem growing a beard. Um, poor Ethan can't grow a fucking beard, and that must be why he's so butthurt and so fragile. Mm. Um, but we, uh, there's going to be plenty of really bad takes. This is one of the bad takes in the country right now, and it's not just from this individual, yeah. but it's from many individuals in this anti-vax, anti-mask bullshit, this QAnon stuff. It's all Q... It, it, and anyone who doesn't believe that the anti-vax, anti-mask movement isn't QAnon, you are fucking fooling yourself. Yeah. It's all from the same fucking ilk. It's all from the same direction. It was this ivermectin fucking borax boo dirt shit. And now they're drinking piss. It's all the same shit. They're doing everything they can do to, to not take the vaccine and not end the pandemic because the only way to continue the chaos and to continue the bullshit is to continue the virus spreading. Right. That's it. The one, I, I, the other thing too is the one thing I've seen uh, on one of my videos recently about might have been my body, my choice kind of thing. Oh Jesus! Or I forget which what, one of the takes between like, oh, here's a Republican like MAGA guy talking, and here's just like a normal person talking. Uh, you know, someone who's like based in reality uh, is they'll come into my comments and they'll say something along the lines of. Uh, both parties are like this. Now, I just want to put this out there. Yeah, both parties, they're not perfect, right? But one is based in reality, and the other one is drinking piss, okay? One is based in reality, and the other one had seven states send in fake electoral college certificates. One is based in reality, and the other one is trying to deprive people of basic human rights. So don't ever come at me with this, well, yeah, they're they're both the same side, and they're both against each other. Well, uh, that's not true. They're they're not the same. They are they are not like you know uh, uh, equal in their in their gross uh, nature. One side is literally again drinking piss to treat COVID and thinks that JFK Jr. is going to show up, and the other side is actually fighting to to uh, to protect human rights, voting rights. And other things that are just basic necessities to live. So we're four minutes over the hour, but I want to continue because I want to touch on one more thing about Martin Luther King and some of the gross shit that they're doing. Um, and, and it's sad that on a Martin Luther King Day that we um, to honor Martin Luther King legacy, we have to beat back all this fascist nonsense that Martin Luther King would have supported. Because another fucking stupid thing that they're saying is that that. Um, Somehow MLK would support this anti-CRT voodoo, right? Um, somehow he would, not only would he believe this garbage that they're spewing, because the garbage that they're spewing is, is not a fucking thing. Right. Um, it's all, it's all fucking, it's all racist tropes anyways. It's all to scare fucking suburban white people about their kids being demonized as white people, which is not a thing. That's not happening. Teaching people history and the truth that doesn't demonize people if you just the other, keep them the truth. The other thing, too, is how much, you know, Republicans or GQP or whatever will fight to to support and, and lift up MLK Jr. today. Right. And and use the quotes in their favor to, mm -hmm. or, or use an argument to say, like, he wouldn't support CRT. But then later on next week or last week or what have you, they'll be like, oh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was a communist. He was a Marxist. And it's You're like, right. Dude, oh yeah, pick, it's right. Pick a lane, pick, man. What right, is it? Right. Is he is he a right winger? Is he a left winger? Does he believe in? Does he not? You well, can't I mean, cherry this, pick this shit and use it as you want. Well, you yeah, but to... that's how that's how fascists do because they want to do the whataboutism thing. That's that's right. their fucking you know the double standard projection. That's always fucking there, always, and it will continue to be there. Uh, Joy of the readout um, posted this. This is a a post um, msnbc.com. I'm uh, guessing that that. Uh, Joy wrote it, but it says Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was open and honest about his deep 
disapproval of white revisionist history and will for ignorance. Like that's the whole point. Like that's literally what's happening. Like, what do you think that I have a dream speech was about? Yeah. Like, what do you think it was about? He was saying, he was saying what they always have said about us and about themselves is wrong. We are all humans. We can be together. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to have this superiority complex. Right. No we one can group be is equal. better than the other. Right. right. We can be equal. We can have equity. Black people in this country are not looking for revenge. And you're lucky that they're not. Yeah. You're and so it also, it's like these people who are Republicans and Christians and, you know, whatever. Uh, is it not God who said all men created equal? Or, I mean, right, obviously that we right. wrote that in our constitution, you know, in our, you know. Right. Well, I mean, right. A in the same breath, they're right. Um, they they made slaves that, uh, you know, a certain right. uh, the fraction of a person in the Constitution. But I, and, and, and and it was actually, you know, George Carlin goes at the heart of this. Uh, you know, I love George Carlin. Um, he says he says the the founding fathers were slave owners who wanted to be free. It really is, you know, like we hold them up to this high standard and i yeah i get that they understood the republic and government and democracy and that it was the best way forward um but i i definitely don't think i definitely don't think that the equality of race was at the forefront of of the founders minds um it yeah. didn't really come until the late 19th century where this country had to deal with the equality uh and and to, to abolish slavery in this country and we had a war over it actually i don't know if you remember that but you know, that's another, you know, you can't, you can't say truth. You can't right. taste truth because it's, it's, it's to guilt white people. Like, what right, the fuck right. are you talking about? Are you talking about the civil, the old yeah. civil war or like the new one that the oh. white people want to start? Oh, well, you know, well, you know, that's kind of funny that you say that because I was watching a documentary on YouTube and I want to talk more about it. Um, and it actually goes to this MLK stuff where they're trying to create a, a place in northern Idaho. There was a bunch of neo-Nazi years ago in the late 80s, oh, early 90s that opened up this community. And I forget exactly where it's called. I have to, um, again, do do my own research and get get the get the notes. You know me. I don't, I don't fucking you know, pay attention yeah. to that kind of shit. Um, but but there's a place in northern Idaho, a community where these neo-Nazis infiltrated. They were trying to create, a, you know, a a, a, a a white state, right. Or a white nation. You oh, know? Yeah. And, and these same people are doing the same thing. They're just not calling it a white nation. Now it's like a, a QAnon nation where they believe that Trump's the president and all this garbage. I, I mean, again, they shifted gears because they realized um, with the alt-right movement, uh, Richard Spencer and the alt-right movement going to Charlottesville and ca carrying the torches and being yeah. Nazis and being neo-Nazis and white supremacists. And that didn't work very well. That yeah. they were like, oh, who oh, knew that, it wouldn't work, yeah. right? So then they adopt a QAnon and they're using QAnon to spread this white supremacy shit. And the grossest, the grossest parts of it is when they think because they're protesting because they they chose not to get vaccinated or wear a mask to get a whopper, yeah. or they're harassing people wearing masks that, that is their choice. That they're some somehow MLK and they're projecting that shit back on us, this fascist shit. So yeah, um, I I I, I agree with uh, Joy here that. That um, of course, of course, MLK would disagree with right revisionist yeah, yeah. history. Oh, and, and um, God forbid any of these people who are uh, misquoting or using uh, what Martin Luther King Jr. said as as weaponized uh, words against his whole movement. Um, you know, God forbid they uh, they they take things out of context and uh, use it as they want, despite the fact that it's the complete opposite of what they think. Right. Right. Well, I think, I think um, it's, it's, um, it's important to remember the actual memory of Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. And the words that he actually said, not just a few of them, but all of them and all the actions that he took good, bad, or indifferent because Martin Luther King was a human. He made mistakes in his life. Um, but ultimately his legacy and what he did for our country, um, not just for his vote and for uh, people of color's vote, for everyone's vote. I don't think people understood that. I don't think Martin Luther King was only fighting for people of color to vote. He was voting for ev he was fighting for everyone, every single person mm -hmm. to be able to have their voices heard. And I think that gets lost a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and and I, I I really it took, us a I, I, it took us a long time to get to to where we were with the civil rights movement. And uh, in the last 
you know, handful of oh, years. Oh yeah, well we've they're trying to reverse a, it. They're trying right, to reverse. We've, we've yeah. you know, it was progressive. That's what, like, what we're make making America great again means. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, we were making make America moves. not not before we had civil rights again. Let's right. do that. And then that right. movement is a total regression of our uh, of where we are. Like we are not only are are as the pandemic, uh, you know, showed us that we have a bunch of idiots living amongst us, but at the same time, it's also trying to. Uh, be regressive and the democratic movements that we have made in the past and go back to a state in which things were pure. Right. Right. Well, those words you use, they love to use those words because oh, it's yeah. code. It's like the let's go Brandon thing. It's all code. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. I appreciate so you coming in. I appreciate you. Yeah. Right. It's uh, so smart. They outsmart us every time. Right. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you coming on an MLK day. Uh, I look forward to, we're going to record an interview this afternoon for this week's uh, podcast, mm -hmm. which is pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited to ask him a few questions. So stick around um, uh, after the show here. I want to talk to you about it off air, but uh, our interview, but this in the audience can catch that. But I also want you to know that we did an interview, speaking of interviews and great interviews, uh, Rachel Bitkoffer last week did a great interview and we actually posted just the interview alone um, cut it out of the show and post it. We thought it was so significant to cut it and put it on YouTube. So go subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can you can find that over there. And make sure not to miss the Bonehead of the Week poll because I'm mm -hmm. sure old Ethan Schmidt there will end up on the Bonehead of the Week. Just go at Tony Michaels Pod. Also follow me and Gabe on Twitter if you're not already, which you should be. You probably are, but you if you're not, you should be. But go over to at the Tony Michaels Pod um, and get and get the uh, the shit list um roundup and also the the bonehead of the week poll i'm sure ethan will end up there on the poll and don't forget tomorrow join us here on the shit list roundup every single weekday noon eastern 11th central the podcast this week three o'clock central four o'clock eastern but next week gabe we're, we're excited here it's gonna mm -hmm. be a lot of work but we're going to the two hours and um i, I think it's actually going to be better this week yeah. and the reason why is because there's not going to be as much pressure on you know our our editing department you know mm -hmm. those guys over there at the editing. yeah i got department. interns in the back yeah right right <laughs> it's not going to be so much pressure on them to get an interview uh because well, our thought is and i think i think we talked about this but we should talk about it on air here uh we're over time but uh, for a few seconds is that our thought is when we do interviews just to bring them in when we have them ready and right. that way the editing department is under pressure and there's uh -huh. not a lot of technical difficulties. I think that's yeah. the thing that we probably uh, will do and continue doing. So is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yoda, Yoda, yeah. Yoda here says, are these interns in the room right now? What are they? Are They're invisible. They're invisible. Yoda. They're <laughs> yeah. They're, they gotta be quiet. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'll see you tomorrow again, noon Eastern 11 central until then surfs up motherfuckers. Shit list.